What's going on, United Speed fam? You're watching another episode of Turbo Time. Let's go. <laughs> So I want to start first. I want to start first off by saying if y'all want to cop some of this dope merch, let us know down in the comments, or I'll link our website that we just got started up. So it just got started about two days ago. I'll link our website down in, in the uh, description below as well too. Go out, check out some some of our merch. You know, buy some merch. Um, and also too, you know, look at the look at the Mustang giveaway. Um, so like I like I've been saying for a while now, the Mustang giveaway will benefit our charity Your Journey's Worth, um, and that is to help out humans of humans of I'm sorry, victims of human trafficking. And so you know, uh, so a, lot, a lot of our merch will go towards that, that as well too. Um, yeah, you know, donate to a good cause, buy some dope merch, and yeah, and join the United Speed fam. So, today we're gonna talk about the new Bugatti Believe, 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 something like that, Believe. And so we're gonna start off first with, you know, like, like I was doing with our previous Turbo Time video, um, we're gonna start based on the performance, talk about the performance of the exterior of it, the interior of it, you know, my final impressions of the car, and basically go from there. Um, so yeah, so basically, as you guys know, Bugatti just came up with a new bad car, all right? It is called the Bugatti Believe, and that thing literally looks like a, a, a car of dreams, right? Like, you've never seen a car like that on the road ever, and unfortunately, it's not a production car just yet, but they are looking at making it into a production car as well, too. But just the concept alone, it literally looks like like a spaceship. So, we're going to go with, we're going we're gonna to talk about the exterior a little bit here real quick, all right? So, this is one of Bugatti's most aggressive cars most aggressive cars to date um it ha if you guys look at it right you have that x um tail the x style tail light in the back along with the, the uh, quad exhaust system out the middle of the back as well as that gigantic rear wing and then roof scoop as well too um a lot of you guys know that we have a, we have a couple of friends that actually own a bugatti and that car looks like a regular toyota camry compared to this car all right, like that is the, the Belize is really the most aggressive looking car Bugatti has ever created in their entire history. Um, with that being said, too, as well. Um, so on the roof, let's put the roof a little bit, all right? The roof scoop itself. So as you guys know, roof scoop made for it. It's meant to put, basically just throw air into the into the motor. Um, so the roof scoop itself has like bubbles, if you will, that actually pop out of it to help reduce drag roughly about ten percent. And it also, you know, when you go and talk about it, it actually you know, brings back in everything else. So, and it's that bubbles I'm using very loose because it, it, I mean, even Bugatti call it bubbles, but like it, it it's cool. Put it, put it in that, it's cool. So with that being said also too, talking more, more about the uh, exterior of the car a little bit too, the, uh, I, I loved the original paint scheme of it, right? So it actually is like the original with Bugatti blue. I always call it Bugatti. I'm sure the actual name for it. But to me, it's I, I call it that Bugatti blue because that's what all the guys known for, in my opinion. Along with all of the exposed carbon fiber. Now, that car is literally the lightest car Bugatti has ever created. And I'll get into that here in a little bit as well, too. Um, and it, honestly, it, it, it's probably the best looking car Bugatti has ever created, in my opinion, also. It definitely is the most aggressive. Um, and with that being said, too, so you, when you look at the car, you literally see like a spaceship, right? So it, it has like the, basically the entire car, design of the car came from uh, basically what was called back in the 1940s, a Bell X-1 jet aircraft from what Bugatti was saying. And so that's where they got a lot of their imagination, a lot of their creativity from what's in that aircraft. So that's why you see a lot of like, I guess aerospace, aeronautical engineering uh, uh, components of the car as well too. And so that car is literally, it, it's, a, it's an airplane on the road, that's all it is. Um, so now, going into the performance of it, right? So, as we all know, Bugatti is known for their 8 liter quad turbo uh, W16 power plant. Um, so they, they first made, made its debut in the Bugatti Veyron, the Bugatti Veyron SS, and then the Chiron, no, all the Bugatti Veyron, uh, um, uh, like, uh, all the Bugatti Veyron, I guess, creations as well too, lack of a better word, as well as, you know, coming into the Bugatti Chiron, Bugatti Chiron Persport, and everything else. Now, this car, all right, is the most, the highest horsepower um, car Bugatti's ever created. 
So with that being said, usually the 8 liter found in the Shino is making right around 15, 1,500 horsepower or so. Um, this one is making 1,825 horsepower and 1,364 pounds feet of torque. All right, then, now that is a literally, like this, number one, that's an astounding number, period. Um, and again, like obviously this is a quad turbo W16 that was, that's found in the Shino, it's just on a much bigger level, right? So with the, to help boost the power up, obviously you have a little bit more boost pressure. Um, you also have the uh, an air to air intercooler, as well as a few other um, uh, nuances here here and there as well, such as the upgraded dry sump oil system as well too. So with that being said, this car is literally straight for the track. There's no like I don't I don't even think that they're even looking at making a road legal production car anyway. They're looking at making it. Basically, it's a pure track production car. Um, and, you know, again, with that being said, too, that 1,825 horsepower, that is 325 more horsepower than you find in a Chiron, all right? Now, 300 horsepower may not may not seem like a lot in today's standards, but think about it. The Chiron's making 1,500 horsepower, which is already, like, mind-blowing in itself. Then you add an extra 325 horsepower on top of that, all right? Now, that is literally what I would always call, like, that, that's, that's astounding. Like, that's, you can basically run it up to, you know, 18, 30 horsepower, 1,825 horsepower, and, that, and that's just insane. So, going from there, now, remember this, this car, all right, the zero to 62 miles an hour in 2.1, uh, 2.17 seconds, if I remember correctly. That, so that's really, so think about it. From right now to right now, zero to sixty-two. Like that's that's insane. That is an insane, like mind-blowing feature. Okay, like think about it. If you count out two seconds for a car to hit zero to sixty miles an hour in, le in two seconds, that's insane. There is no other car out there that can do that. The the quickest production car out there was the Dodge Demon, two point three seconds zero to sixty, and now also the same for, for a rear-wheel drive V8 car. This thing is doing it in point in, in point two seconds quicker than that. All right, so let that sink in for a second. That a car can hit, can, a car can now hit zero to sixty in two point one seven seconds. That's insane. I'll post all the times up right here as well too. So again, con continuing on as well. So excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, combining you know weight savings along with the massive carbon ceramic brakes and lightweight calipers this thing is probably the most efficient most effective uh stocking car any car i've ever had in, in ever really um if you think about it again too like this car is literally a track car i keep saying but i, I don't think i don't think there's any other track car out there that can do the time that this thing can do the the car itself okay let, let real quick I'm, I'm sorry to keep jumping around here the car itself will do the nurburgring time in five minutes and 23 seconds okay like that, that that's that's unbelievable that's completely unbelievable especially for bugatti all right because bugatti isn't really known for track cars right they're more so known for you know top speed run cars the bugatti Veyron ss the bugatti chiron 300 plus uh um 300 plus ss those cars, the Bugatti Veyron can do about 286 miles an hour. 280 miles an hour, I'm sorry. The Bugatti Chiron S the 300 plus is doing 300 miles an hour. They are literally known for the top speed run cars. They are not known for, for actual full on track cars until now. And so as a lot of you guys know, Bugatti back in the day used to be more of like a race car. They used to have, you know, a lot of, uh, besides their coach built cars that were back in the day, they had a lot of actual full on race cars back in the day as well too. So to me, right now, this car is starting to, starting to bring back into their uh, their original I guess mindset of racing and being one of the most creative one of the most um, craziest race cars out there as you guys can see from front of bleed okay so now what I want to go to is look at the interior of the car all right so as you guys know when you're racing all right and you have a race car the purpose the, in order for the driver to get the most the best lap times possible he must be comfortable first of all so the driver actually sits much lower and he sits much closer to the dashboard itself so this car is literally meant to go on a track as quick as possible including the driver to give him the, the most helpful um i guess the most helpful ways possible basically so as you guys can see from the exterior right now as well too 
the entire interior of the car is just straight carbon fiber. There is no amenities like whatsoever. It's just straight carbon fiber, straight race car. That's it. The end. So I can't really say a lot about the interior because there's not really a lot of information about the interior just yet either. But from what I can see from the video as well as pictures, the car is literally just straight carbon fiber in the interior. Just a few little things here and there, but that's really it. So, going on about some of my final thoughts, you know, conclu concluding today's video real quick. So this car, like I've been saying, is the most aggressive, most ridiculous track car a guy has ever made. And I use ridiculous in a, in a good way, not a bad way, okay? And what I'm excited to see, because a lot of you guys know that Koenigsegg and Bugatti are very good competitors for each other. Top seed run cars, track cars, everything. I'm excited to see what Koenigsegg brings up next to, to compete with this car if Bugatti um, wants to uh, make, it, make it into a production car. So, with that being said too, there's no other car out there that's pushing the limits like this car is right now. A lot of you guys know I am a huge Koenigsegg fan. This car, the Bugatti is literally the most aggressive slash like it pushes its limits it, it pushes its limits to what for mathematical wise for you know all the science that goes behind the engineering of the car mathematical equation that like, goes behind the engineering of the car to what a car can actually do all right and that's exactly what i love seeing it's giving other car manufacturers something to compete with that people don't really understand all right so with that being said too it literally takes it literally it, it makes your mind and your imaginations run free with this car. Um, and with that also, it literally, it the way you look at the car, the way you see the car, you literally think it's a one-off, like, custom car that you just, you, you, you need to have millions and millions of dollars to go out and buy, first of all. But it's literally a car that you can just, you let your imagination run free from the design aspect to the engineering aspect of it. So... Again, this is a little short video. This is what I'm talking about talking about exactly what the car is basically built for, what the car is made of. And, you know, letting you guys see the car a little bit up close in person for the most part. As best as I can get it because, I mean, obviously I don't have access to that car at all right now. Um, and let you guys, you know, take a, take a more of a, a per, personal approach to it, basically. So, <laughs> to, conclude today, to, to conclude today's short video... I want to thank each and every each and every one of you guys for watching. I want to send a huge shout out to uh, one of my friends who who actually started his own YouTube channel. It's called Don't Lose Sight, and he's doing pretty good with his channel so far. Um, but yeah, like I said, I want to give you guys a massive shout out, massive thank you first of all, also for watching this video. Make sure you hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, click that notification bell for all of our notifications. Our future videos will come up. Make sure you buy some merch, buy some tickets for the Mustang so you guys can get to a good cause, and we'll see you guys later. Peace. My friend Robert right there, I've got a gorgeous Camaro. My mom hates my Camaro. Ew! Stop! So thanks everyone, we appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and hit that bell for mm -hmm. notifications. Yeah. We appreciate you all, we love you all. From the Evolution family, we'll see you guys soon. Yep. Peace. Peace.